Terry Waite, it's lovely to have you here. Firstly, you've written about your experiences, your isolation for almost five years in Beirut and having to cope in extreme circumstances. Do you see any parallels between your journey and that of the separatists on the Mayflower? Well, they were difficult years, but somehow you find that when you're put into a tough situation, you find you have resources you didn't know you had. And there are parallels between my experience and the experience of those early settlers. They were able to demonstrate hope. They faced extraordinarily difficult circumstances. When I went out to negotiate for the release of hostages, it was a step into the unknown. You didn't know whether you were going to be killed or captured. You suddenly find that you have resources that enable you to cope and deal with it. The early settlers had faith. And I don't believe that anyone who claims faith necessarily has special protection. But what faith does, it enables you to maintain hope. And I think if in the situation of extremity, you can maintain hope, well, you're halfway home. You're heavily involved in a number of charities and your work takes you all over the world. What are you up to at the moment? Well, when I came out of captivity, which is a long time ago now, I got lots of requests from people who were uh, friends or family of hostages to give them advice and help. And so I used to meet with these people. At any one time, there's something like 2,000 people being held hostage in the world. And then I felt that this work ought to be institutionalized. So I founded an organization called Hostage UK, which is now a hostage international. Then there's work with the homeless. I opened the first community for the homeless an organization which gets people called Emmaus, it's not religious, it's a secular organization, gets people back into life, gives them a decent standard of accommodation. I opened the first community in Cambridge, England, um, oh, over 20 years ago, and we now have 39, so we're building up. You've witnessed so much over the years, including Christian refugees fleeing Syria. The Mayflower pilgrims were also escaping religious persecution. How do you tackle that problem? There was instances of people being put to death simply for not going to church. Well, that form of, of oppression is intolerable. It's intolerable in religion. It's intolerable in any society. So they were fleeing that to gain freedom. But when you look at freedom, there is no such thing as absolute freedom. There have to be constraints and boundaries somewhere. Otherwise, you have total chaos. And that's where community comes in. Uh, and in that, experience the freedom, freedom to worship, freedom to engage in occupations, uh, freedom to associate. Do we need more dialogue between different faith groups to have a better understanding? We certainly need more dialogue. Um, there are many misunderstandings. For instance, um, it's only a matter of a few years ago when Christians, Muslims and Jews would share the same place of worship in the Middle East. Well, that's become now virtually impossible in many instances. Uh, one of the reasons it's happening is because of insecurity. And therefore, the groups gather together and um, resist any attempt to have outside influence. So I think the answer is much more understanding of why people are behaving as they're behaving. That's part of the answer. And that's one way to deal with the problem. The other way to deal with it is not to be aggressive towards people, even if aggression is shown to you. Aggression was shown to me in captivity. Although I was angry, I tried not to be aggressive back. Um, I think you have to try and understand and take wherever possible the root of non-violence. Force should only be used as an absolute last resort. Terry Waite, thank you very much. Thank you.